We've talked a lot about many Metallica features, riffs, solos, composition, harmonies, and there's also another really underrated feature about Metallica that people don't praise enough, the lyrical genius of James Hetfield. While most popular crap pop and rap artists talk about sex, drugs, and romance, Metallica has a colossal net of lyrical topics and fresh ideas thanks to James Hetfield. And today, we're going to explore some of my favorite lyrical parts in Metallica songs in each and every single one of the albums. So let's start. So let's start with the debut album, the classic Kill 'Em All, that started the Metallica journey. A lot of things make Kill 'Em All stand out, but the lyrics really are not a prominent feature on the record which is perfectly logical because of the immaturity and rawness on the record. Metallica were mostly talking about immature topics, from headbanging on Whiplash to having an incredible, intense concert on Hit The Lights. But of course, one of the most iconic and actually quite cool lyrical topics of Metallica was on Whiplash, the one and only time in Metallica's history the name Metallica was said in a Metallica song. So that's, of course, one of the most iconic lyrical moments in Metallica's discography. Now let's get to Ride the Lightning, the first time ever James showed us his incredible writing skills when it comes to lyrics. The album's lyrical theme was on death, either it came from war, suicide, or even execution. So the first iconic lyrical moment on Ride the Lightning is from the song Ride the Lightning. Time moving slow, the minutes seem like hours, the final curtain call I see. How true is this? Just get it over with. If this is true, just let it be. The song talks about how an innocent person deals with being in the electric chair moments away from his execution. And we see how he deals, adapts, and panics over the situation. He says that time moves slow. Each second is just mental suffering. And then we see him accepting the idea and making peace with his fate that he's gonna die. He's like, if this is true, just let it be and just, just do it. Just a brilliant way of describing how an innocent person would feel in this type of horrifying situation. Shouting gun on a run through the endless gray. On a fight for the right, yes, but who's to say? This particular part is really incredible writing by James when it comes to a war song based on the For Whom the Bell Tolls book that described that in a war, there is never a good side or a bad side. Most of the time, at least. Everyone sees themselves as the good guys, and everyone sees the opponents as the villains. And James described that perfectly in just two sentences. Shouting gun, on the run through the endless gray, on the fight for the right, yes, but who's to say? Who's to say that you're fighting for the right? Who's to say that you are the good guys? And also the good harmony between the sentences with the rhyming, gray, and say, while also presenting the point clearly and beautifully. No one but me can save myself, but it's too late. Now I can't think, think why I should even try. This one is from Fade to Black which talks about a person suffering from depression and then committing suicide. The guy knows he can save himself, but he is sure that he's done with his life. It's too late for him. He doesn't even know why he should continue fighting or trying for this life, which is, of course, a wrong philosophy. You should always fight the darkness in your life. But the song shows us the point of view and the perspective of a depressed individual. Now let's get to Master of Puppets. The theme for Master of Puppets is about manipulation. Either addictions manipulating the addicts, doctors manipulating patients, or religious icons manipulating the public, and so on. Taste me, you will see. More is all you need. Dedicated to how I'm killing you. 
Now we get to one of the really well-written lyrical sections in Master's pre-chorus. That is, as we all know, the addiction talking to the addict. Taste me, come on, you'll see that more is all you need. The song represents the urge to continue on doing something that feels good for a second, but then destroys your life. And it's portrayed in how your mind, your addiction, persuades you or deceive you into doing something, into doing your addiction. It wants to destroy you, which is of course super relatable because everyone has their addictions that they try to let go of, but they can't. Amazingly written by James here. And coming back to Master of Puppets in another lyrical section in the last verse, there's a really cool easter egg. Hell is worth all that! Natural habitat! Just a rhyme without a reason! James said that hell is worth all that natural habitat, which is a super random follow-up. He just said it because it rhymes, literally, that and habitat. And then he literally told us that it just to rhyme without a reason. Pretty cool Easter egg, yeah? Build my fear of what's out there. Can I breathe the open air? Whisper things into my brain, assuring me that I'm insane. Keep him tight and makes him well. He's getting better, can't you tell? Now we get to Sanitarium, which talks about someone that is sane and healthy, trapped in, well, a sanitarium, and shows us how cruel these places are. They built his fear. No, you're crazy. Outside there, the real world, that's not for you. And even though he's literally sane and healthy, they are trying to persuade him that he's insane, whisper things into my brain, assuring me that I'm insane. And another part that I really like in Sanitarium, this is where they reflect on how rudimentary, ineffective, and actually cruel the methods that these places take to cure the mentally ill. Keep them tied, it makes them well. And the problem that makes everything worse is that they actually believe that these methods do any significant positive effect. They lie to themselves. He's getting better, can't you tell? So yeah, genius lyrics by James, honestly. Soldier boy, made of clay, now an empty shell. 21, only son, but he served as well. This is honestly could be my favorite lyrical part ever, or at least in the top three or five. Disposable Heroes is a genius song when it comes to lyrics. Talks about the generals, the leaders, using the young and the poor to fight their wars and achieve their political goals. Because to them, we are just disposable. They can die. There's thousands and millions of them. And the best lyrical part that reflects on that topic in just a few words, it's this one. It's absolutely genius. Soldier boy. He's a young boy. He doesn't have any experience yet. Made of clay, as in for me, at least the way I perceive it. He's full of life, he's full of optimism to life. Now an empty shell, that means he's either dead, depressed, or sick. Could be anything, really. 21, he's just 21 years old. He's a really young boy, just out of his teenage years. Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't lived his life yet. Only son, which of course rhymes really well with 21, and shows us that he's an only son, he has no siblings. That shows that they don't care that if he got harmed or died, no one will look after his old ill parents. But he served as well. And that shows us the greed and the injustice of the whole military system. He's young, he has a family, but no, he'll serve us. That line is genius, honestly. Now it's Leper Messiah, a song that talks about any religious icon that manipulates people in order to gain money. Here, if you come to me and pay me money, I'll get you closer to God. If you give me money, I'll get you a place in heaven. And that is shown in the lyrics in the line, send me money, send me green, heaven you'll meet. If you made a contribution with your valuables, either money or anything else really, you'll get 
the better seat, the better placement in heaven. So it would reflect on the people who use religion to fulfill their greed rather than to benefit both themselves and others. So let's get to the lyrical icon, Injustice for All, which has the lyrical theme of injustice. That's obvious. In the American legal system, in freedom of speech, from family, anything really that includes injustice. Death of Mother Earth, never a rebirth. Evolution's end, never will a man, never. Now, Blackened talks about environmental decay or mass extinction caused by human activities, either nuclear wars or just the normal pollution that destroys our planet. This particular verse is really, really cool because it shows us the ugly truth straight to our faces. Mother Earth dies. Mother Earth, as we all know, is nature, never a rebirth, as in it's too late to save it. What's done is done, and now we face the consequences. Evolution's end, as in billions of years of evolution of living creatures, if you, if you believe in that theory, never will it mend. As in never will the wounds in our beautiful ecosystem heal. It's just really in your face and actually quite irrelevant. We see global warming and climate change these days. And also the rhyming between the different lines, even a catchy vibe. Earth and birth, end and mend. Great writing by James. Do you feel what I fear? Living properly. Truth to you will last to me. Do you choose what I choose? More alternatives. Energy derived from both. Do you need what I need? Boundaries overthrow. Look inside the reaches of old. I have the beholder talks about different opinions, different way of doing things, and how sometimes society forces you to do something a certain way, even though it's all a matter of opinion and totally subjective. And what I love about this particular part of the lyrics is that it explores different ways of how this subjective thing works. The first one was phobias. Everyone fears different things. Some people fear heights. Some people fear death, etc. As in, do you fear what I fear? Living properly. Also, it explores uh, that everyone believes in different theories from the many conspiracy theories that are around the world. As in, truth to you are lies to me. Everyone chooses different things, which creates new alternatives, creates new careers, new passions, new personalities, new paths. And I love how James implemented the famous sentence that everyone mentions in opinion-oriented arguments, to each his own, which rhymes with overthrown. So it's such an underrated song with awesome lyrics. The same thing I've always heard from you, do as I say, not as I do. Now we get to Dyer's Eve, a relatable song to many different people on so many levels because it talks about having abusive, toxic parents. We all deal with some problems with our parents, yet we love them. But James went through a lot. So these lyrics come from the heart, uh, you know. One of the most relatable sentences in Dyer's Eve that kids hear from grown-ups all the time is do as I say, not as I do. It's really brilliant how James implemented that in here. They can shout, they can fight, they can swear, they can do anything, but you cannot take them as a reference. You can only be obedient to what they say, which is, of course, not fair at all. One of the most relatable sentences in Metallica's lyrics, honestly. I'm your dream, make you real. I'm your eyes when you must steal. I'm your pain when you can't feel. Sad but true. The song's lyrics talk about addiction and how addiction controls you everywhere with all your senses. I just love the entire chorus. I'm your dream that makes you real. I'm your eyes, I'm your sight when you need to steal something. I'm your pain when you can't feel anything. Just the contrast of words between dream and real and pain and can't feel. And of course, with the classic James Hetfield catchy vibes that work really well in live performances with the rhymes real, steal, and feel. 
awesome lyrics by James. They dedicate their lives to running all of hills. He tries to please them all. This better man he is. Now we get to The Unforgiven, one of the best Metallica songs lyrically. The miserable boy grew up to be an old man having a miserable life caused by society, and now he can't forgive them. And I love the examples James throws here. They dedicate their lives to running all of his. What they are doing is interfering in his life's details that are none of their business. We all see people like these in our lives. He tries to please them all, this bitter man he is. This is also brilliantly written by James. He reflects on a really relatable matter, on how some people try to please everyone, be nice to everyone, be efficient, be caring, do them a lot of favors, and then are showered with criticism and people being harsh towards them. Amazingly written, honestly. Through the Never is an awesome lyrical masterpiece for me. It talks about the human quest and trying to understand this vast universe, whose size no human brain could comprehend, and trying to search for life outside of Earth, and how the universe was created, etc. So as I said, we try to search for how the universe was created, as in came to be how it begun. We all see these different theories that explain how the universe was created and how the universe began, the most popular one being the Big Bang Theory. We are all alone in the solar system, which is referred to in the song as the family of the sun, which is a great way to rhyme with everyone, because the song tells us that everyone is so curious to understand this scary, majestic universe while we're the only ones in our home, which is the third closest planet to the sun after Mercury and Venus. And the song says and refers to it as third stone from the sun. Lyrically amazing. Yeah, I took your love for granted And all the things you said to me Yeah, yeah, I need your arms to welcome me But a cold stone's all I see now, Mama Said is a really melancholic and depressive song, talking about James's mother. And this certain part of the lyrics really clicks with a lot of people, from my experience into going into the comment sections. And the lyrics really reflect about a problem a lot of people face, taking someone's love for granted and ignoring the thing they say. And then you only miss them and start to appreciate them when they're gone, when it's too late. As in, I need your arms to welcome me, but a cold stone is all I see. And that, of course, is not only a normal loved one, but a mother. So imagine the amount of pain. So we should all learn something from this beautiful piece of poetry. And now I wait my whole lifetime for you. And now I wait my whole lifetime. Now, there are many different perceptions about what the Outlaw Torn's lyrics are actually about. For me, it's about losing someone close to you, either by death or anything else, really, and then trying pathetically to find a replacement to them, but never actually finding one. He waits his entire lifetime for just a glimpse of them to come back and does everything possible for that empty void inside of him to get filled. He searches everywhere, painstakingly, really everywhere he would know, but it's all in vain. Now, 
Now we get to Reload in Devil's Dance. This song for me talks about how the devil talks to you and deceives you into committing sins and wrongful deeds. He keeps telling you, I see in your eye something. I see your urge to do that. You are free. You can do whatever you want. And that he also knows that he will plant the seeds of the sins in you and make them grow. Like first, he'll start with a small sin then move to something bigger, then something bigger, then something bigger, until you find yourself eventually doing something catastrophic. Beautifully written by James. And I can't bear to see you. I've let me be. So wicked and wrong. So as I write to you, Now we get to Low Man's Lyric, which talks about a very depressed person seeing all the wrongful deeds he did and that harmed him and all the people that he loves and writing a letter supposedly to a loved one seeking forgiveness and understanding. The guy can't bear what he let himself become by his own hands. He's so wicked by his sins and worn and damaged by them. He asks for understanding and forgiveness because now he is in such a low place. Wash it back so you won't stand mine. Get in bed with your own kind. Now this lyrical part in Sweet Amber is really interesting because they were written because of the circumstances Metallica were going through at the time. Their record label forced them to advertise the label sponsors. If they do so, they will remain on good terms with the label. If not, the label will cut them off. And usually stab the back with a knife in the English language is an expression for betrayal. And James implemented that expression really, really well in the lyrics, meaning he'll, I'll wash your back, meaning I'll do something for you so you won't stab mine, meaning so you won't betray me. Amazing lyrics knowing that it reflected on this chapter of Metallica's life. That Was Just Your Life is such an incredibly written song. It describes the feeling of shock you get when you're old, you're wrinkled, you're close to death's age, and then you realize, whoa, was that just my life? I didn't do anything I wanted to do. I didn't achieve my dreams. I didn't live enough. And it describes that feeling of shock in anything that is very shocking and accompanied by severe anxiety and stress. Here are some of my favorite examples. Like a blind man that was shoved into the speeding driver's seat. Like a blind man that was shoved into speeding driver's seat. Just imagine a blind man that out of nowhere finds himself in a speeding car and he tries to control the car. Just imagine the shock and the pressure. And that describes the feeling of shock because that was just your life. A raging river drowning when I only need a drink. Imagine also the shock when you only want a cup of water and then you find a raging river heading towards you violently. That describes the shock because that was just your life. Followed you from dawn of time. Whisper thoughts into your mind. Watched your towers hit the ground Lured your children never found Helped your kings abuse their crown In the heart of feeble man Plant the seeds of my own plan The strong and powerful will fall Find a piece of me in all Now we get to the Judas kiss which is also another expression for betrayal, which in this case is not the betrayal of a human being, but rather the devil himself. After he lured you into doing something wrong, he leaves you alone unless you face the consequences yourself. 
From the beginning of time, the devil whispered thoughts into our mind, told us to do this and that, and then mentioning us some examples. Watch your towers hit the ground, which I think is James referencing to the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Helped your kings abuse their crowns, referring to the many, many corrupt kings and leaders around the world. Uh, which is another thing that the devil lured us into doing. In the heart of feeble man, we're feeble, we're weak from the perspective of the devil. Of course, he hates us. Uh, he plants the seeds of his plan, planting the seeds in us, as we said, the evolution of the sins until it becomes something really, really bad. It's the devil's plan, of course, and all of us find a piece of him in us that encourages us to do sins, to do wrongful deeds. Beautifully written by James, honestly. Confusion is about soldiers suffering from PTSD after war. Really interesting topic that relates to a lot of people. We finally leave the battlefield, but we still live the horrors every day. We come home after war, and things don't make sense now. This quiet, stable life, that's not how things work for soldiers. Of course, the poetry, the rhyming, field, heal, and war, and more, and also the vocals make it a very, very beautiful verse in general. So yeah, we discussed a lot today, my favorite Metallica lyrical moments from every single Metallica record. I would have loved to include more, but the video was getting kind of long, so I had to cut some stuff. So yeah, I, will, I would have loved to include one, uh, No Leaf Clover, Atlas Rise, maybe. Uh, maybe not, Now That We're Dead, um, and Justice For All. So yeah, tell me in the comment sections down below, what are some of your favorite Metallica lyrics?